Welcome back to the Nutra Medical Report. We had a re- very lively discussion yesterday with uh, Ted, uh, Dr. Ted Brower. Today I want to stick to some news. Uh, things are really heating up between Russia, China, and Iran. And uh, they've ticked off Putin. In fact, I read, read one report, and uh, he basically said, take those papers from America and NATO and grind, and grind twist them up and stick them, as they say, uh, per rectum. How's that? That's the uh, medical yeah, term. Did Putin actually say that? Yes, he did. Yeah, he just, they're, they're <laughs> well, really the Russians Putin really off. kind of uh, get a kick out of that because uh, yeah. he, he's uh, uh, made statements like that before. And, and, uh, his, and by the way, he doesn't, he doesn't say it flippantly. He actually means it anatomically. Yeah, well, uh, so, he, uh, uh, his his uh, support go rises dramatically. Uh, he said at one point they would go after the Chechen terrorist. Uh, they'd shoot him in the outhouse, uh, which doesn't mean anything to us, but uh, it's evidently a colloquial expression in Russia. And uh, his uh, his support shot up dramatically. I mean, they like uh-huh. strong men. Right. Now, here, here's the latest, uh, Dr. Bell, and this is... Uh, I'll make a bet their water's not fluoridated. I'll make a bet they don't have tons of soy everywhere. They have this buckwheat that they eat for their breakfast cereal, the breakfast of champions, obviously. Uh, let's talk about what the, what what's happening with nuclear reactors. When you told me this news, and I'm not going to steal your thunder, I said, What? You're going to do what? Well, well, okay, what was it? Okay, well, hot on the heels of its breakthrough uh, massive deal with China uh, for oil and national gas and everything, Russia is set to build eight more nuclear power plants in Iran. Eight more. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Yeah, uh, as and, say, uh, as say, uh, that's kind of, I uh, can't exactly say it on the air, but that's kind of uh, in your face um, to yeah. uh, Israel and to the United States, to the globalists, to the Zionists, to NATO. Uh, you know, they, they're, they've they attacked Russia through the Ukraine because <laughs> Russia stopped uh, the NATO invasion of Syria uh, some months ago, and a few months before that, we stopped the joint... Uh, Israeli American attack on Iran, and uh, so they they've decided to go after Russia. Well, Russia is not uh, Omar Gaddafi's Libya or you know what other. Uh, Russia is Russia, and when you get China in there, you're talking about a great deal of power. Uh, right. But of course, this is really right out of the Bible. Right. This is the alliance the way, the pushing, now between uh, Russia, China, and Iran is being assembled as a direct response to the Obama the way, globalist Zionist attack on Russia via the Ukraine. This is how we develop global alliances for world wars, and this is how we're developing the global alliances for uh, the apocalypse, for Armageddon, for World War right. III. Now, in, in people who don't believe in God, and there are people out there listening to this program, you need to get a reality check. When the Bible, written by God, he's not a clockmaker, winds up the universe and just walks away. God is outside of time space. To God, the infinite past and the infinite future, to him, are the same. God does not, is, not, is not a timekeeper. He is the maker of time. He is outside of the dimensions of time space. And what you have to understand is when he goes to the, the Revelator or any of these prophets, he's literally telling us this is an eternal book that transcends time space. I'm going to well, tell you. Well, you know, so some people want to say, well, that's not scientific. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold no, the, no, that's hold not the, the, the uh, uh, range here. Uh, look, it is scientific. If you uh, get into quantum physics, you will find that one of the most popular theory probably out there that describes how the universe functions is the super holographic universe model and that basically uh, incorporates in it as, as a key part of it uh, uh, this concept and the way the wording they use could have come right out of a, theolog- a theological textbook but it, the wording they use is all that was is all that is is and all that will be is in other words uh, it's very much the Christian concept of eternity everything is there and when we die we go to heaven which is not in the future past present it's in all of them it's in eternity right. and and the latest right. uh, scientific uh, knowledge says yes uh, that's how the universe functions so exactly. you know don't don't 
people that want to be dismissive of, oh, well, you can't do prophecy and God doesn't know and, and blah, blah, blah. Well, I'm sorry, but that's not science. And, right. no, actually, uh, the you, science, you the science, that, science there has to, to be a lawgiver, too. God. There has to be a lawgiver. So when you hear people like this uh, uh, wheelchair bound by ALS, uh, I'm not even going to mention his name, a physicist that doesn't believe in God and uh, likes to believe in black holes. The laws that create black holes in the event horizons, that creates a Higgs field for dark matter and energy. The lawgiver is beyond time and space. And what we have to understand is what's going to happen here shortly in this world is that they're forcing Putin's hand and he will act as a beast dictator. He will. Okay. And by the way, when he starts taking over chunks of uh, Ukraine or other countries like uh, uh, Moldova, they're going to do nothing because if they try to do anything, he will sl he will body slam the NATO forces and our forces, our special forces, by the way. And a good example was two years ago in Georgia, uh, in the Rokai Tunnel, which is where a lot of the gas lines comes through Georgia. Uh, the Shakashvili, the Thai eating drug addicted uh, idiot who is Western uh, Papa, yes, yeah, Western Papa in in Georgia was uh, literally wanting to turn Georgia into a NATO member. Now, this is directly a slap in the face to the Russians to make NATO. There's no purpose geopolitically to do it other than to tick off the Russians and to guarantee a future hardening of their position toward us. Rather than doing business, like getting rid of the illegal drugs that are poisoning their own children and ours that are coming out of this golden triangle of, of now the largest producer of, of heroin in the world, which is Afghanistan, which is killing their young people, by the way, we no longer have cooperation. Same thing as the RD-80 rockets, which are the rockets that deliver all of our supplies to the U.S. Space, U.S. and International Space Station. It's all on contract with Russia. Our rockets are so out of date, they haven't made a new uh, rocket from Saturn V-5 in over 30 years. The Russians redesign them every year. They're so far ahead in their physics, in their, in their, in their, their science, and their, the science of war. We're not spending as much money, but every chink in our dragon armor they have figured out a way to neutralize us. So the idea that we're going to just waltz in and do a NATO game and stop the Russians, they're delusional. Yeah, they're well, delusional. you know what Georgia did, and, and the, the armed forces were, they were basically under the authority of a Israeli general, and there were yeah. a thousand uh, Israeli com uh, commandos uh, right. that were fighting for Georgia. They uh, attacked an area that uh, was almost pure Russian citizens, Right, and, they were shelling them. Uh, they were shelling them in their they homes. They used traditional Soviet tactics for for ground maneuver, ground warfare, uh, in in advance of a. Ta a tank column, they neutralized everything with uh, tubeless and tubed artillery. In other words, with 152 millimeter uh, cannons and uh, the, the old Stalin Oregon type of uh, rockets, they flatten everything. Nothing lifts, so the tanks can roll through un unharmed. If there are any anti-tank mines, they're blown up. Uh, there are no people left. Everything is dead. And they went through a, an apartment complex, uh, a village of Russians uh, asleep in their beds and just slaughtered right. many of them. Well, uh, that was a bit too much for Putin and uh, the Russians, and they stormed in, and uh, they could have taken over the whole country. They did, and they just uh, uh, protected their people. But uh, they, they can be tough. Well, we they know did, that, uh, and we're counting Tim, on that. Because, Tim, you know what uh, they did? The, they, they, they killed all of our special forces over there. Blackwater Security is now called Academy. They killed all these Israeli special forces, Delta-type force. They killed any uh, foreign mercenaries that were there, they just slaughtered them all. The Russians literally cleaned the rat's nest out. And the same thing is going to happen if there's a little war game that they tried to decide any live ammo games with the uh, Russians in western Ukraine around Kiev around these pipelines because what's happening now is Kiev has been demanded by Russia to prepay for any gas and oil. They don't have the money. They can't borrow the money. They can't, they've can't. they already they up to their to eyeballs. They by the 3rd of, uh, of June. Right, and that's literally, literally weeks away. So what that means is this that there I've already said and this is the Maidan party in the sector right that they're going to attack the pipelines you want to take off the Russians and have an entire giant army immediately invade western Ukraine and Kiev you're going to have it in June if they try to pull this off there we're sitting on the knife's edge with trigger happy western back maniacs and Putin isn't going to put up with it they try to touch those pipelines and it's over Welcome back, and uh, Tim, uh, here's the scenarios that I expect to happen this year. We're going to have the linear shower that's going to occur on Saturday. 
Uh, it's probably going to be the biggest meteor shower in several hundred years. We passed through the tail of the comet linear last year. Uh, while we we're on the other side of the of the world of the of the orbit, it passed through our, pretty, our orbital pathway, and the debris of that comet is is going to come down as as basically a meteorite shower, extremely active. Meteorites are dangerous. They can not only strike objects, but we see when we pass through meteorites, they affect the ionosphere, and they can trigger off plasma events such as earthquakes and volcanoes. Um, it's only a matter well, of time before we also major... have three more blood moons coming. Right, and we have the the blood moons. I think are basically God's warning, telling us that all hell is going to break loose very shortly. The government is actually f purposely trying to force a war event because they have no more options. The derivatives economy used to even make money. This is the funny money system. That doesn't even work anymore. Yeah, we don't. You know, there are very few things we manufacture, or uh, and uh, certainly, uh, you know, we we manufacture some military items and some aircraft. Uh, less and less all the time. Now, by the way, as you know, in about three weeks, uh, tens and tens of thousands of NATO troops from about 17 countries are going to start pouring in to the eastern Ukraine. Um, or into the Ukraine, right, well, the well, western Ukraine. Now, western Ukraine, yeah. Uh, Kiev, uh, the, the Kuga uh, Junta has announced that they're ready for the final stage of their military operations in the eastern Ukraine. They said that uh, a few hours after they lost uh, uh, about 9, uh, 11 soldiers uh, on an attack. Uh, whether that attack, uh, one of the one of their people there said it didn't come from the separatists. Uh, it may have been a false flag attack uh, designed to make Russia look bad. Because even Russia, even NATO now admits that uh, the Russian troops are pulling back from the border. Um, yeah, Russia basically Putin's playing his hand very well. He is not intervening. He's not jumping in there. He's literally getting them to get down on their hands and knees and beg him to intervene. And he will have to do it. Because when they start coming in and slaughtering the people like they did in Georgia, where they start shelling them, when they start coming with attack helicopters and killing citizens that have pitchforks and shovels, and you know bending over women that are eight months pregnant and killing them over desks, strangling them because they don't want to waste a bullet, so they take a baseball bat and literally bash their brains in. This is the kind of garbage that's going that's happening, and the Russians are going to stop in, 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 in our name with our money. In our name with our money, by the way. And it's the same thing with abortion. When, when the first thing that the abominator did was to pass the Montreal Protocol, which basically allows them to fund abortions around the world, that blood is on our hands because we don't speak up. When you and I speak up, uh, Tim, that blood's not on our hands anymore. We have done the will of the Most High God. And those so-called Christians out there that don't speak out against us, that blood's still on your hands. Don't see well, if you're going to go to the pearly gate. What concerns me is we have several million listeners, very good people, right. and uh, they're they're good people. Right. But it's the people well, that we're not reaching. It's kind of a case of pre preaching to the choir. It's the well, people then, we're the not thing, reaching. You know, here, no, here's the thing: if we reach uh, several million, and each of those reaches. Four or five, and those four exactly. or five reach four or five. Then that it will help. start reaching the whole world. The, the real gospel is this: get involved, hear from God, and do it. Don't be, don't, don't act like you think you're, you're, you're being a Christian is a is a noun, it's a verb. You know, well, you, you don't know, speak as out. big as this world is, uh, there's uh, uh, I forget what they call it, but uh, you know, we're seven people away from anybody on Earth. Exactly. And, so there's no and, excuse and for us not to. In one of my uh, lectures early on, when I I, I teach uh, humanities, I, I try to explain that that really it does make sense, and I said, okay, pick at random a. Um, uh, a rice farmer in uh, Cambodia, and how would I possibly be uh, three or four people away from knowing him? People I know that know somebody that know him. Well, uh, the late uh, king of Cambodia, uh, whose father uh, to the present king, uh, I knew him. And uh, he, I'm sure, knew everybody that was a regional official, a local official in his kingdom. And uh, so that's one, two, and uh, probably uh, another one or two. And I'm right there knowing some poor rice farmer in Cambodia. And here I am sitting in, in the American Midwest. Uh, and, and you can always make connections like that. Uh, even though it's a large planet, uh, in many ways it's small. 
And this is God's world. This is God's uh, blue gem of a planet. And the evil ones are doing their best to to spread blood, death, and destruction across it, and to even kill the planet itself. Exactly. And, I call uh, it star, it's up the to Earth us. is like a his blue jewel, the star sapphire, which is the sapphire of the prophets of the Creator God. It's a it's a womb of the souls of seven billion plus people now, yeah. and that womb is about to birth the living souls that are going to fuse with the Spirit of the Most High, become sons and daughters of the Most High, pick up their scepters, and the real gospel is the ascension not only of us individually but as a group. As mankind ascends and no longer becomes under the boot of technology like the transhumanist idiots, you know, like uh, Ray Kurzweil and the Google Foundation, NSA, etc., and the globalist uh, satanic elite and the Sabbatean Satanistic Jews, who aren't Jews at all because they're not praisers of God, they are abusers. As Jesus said, they are of the synagogue of Satan. That's I've his got words, an not mine. Interesting drawing on my my site. Uh, it's, it's Europe. Do a Google search, large sterling Europe, and you'll find it. But uh, up near the top, near the masthead, is this picture or a drawing, and it's a guy on a on a ladder, rickety ladder, and all around him is a destroyed. Uh, oh yeah, stuff, I like that. I like that picture. Car. And he's looking over it, and on the wall is written, "The beginning is near." And He's looking out over the top of this tall wall on a, on a ladder, and it's the great, beautiful cosmos. And you see, uh, Armageddon also means that the second coming of Christ is near. Well, so the, the we're book going of Revelation. through uh, yeah. Yeah, some yeah. really terrible times now, and they're going to get worse. Uh, well, that you can count on. But when Christ returns, he will make all things new and all right. things perfect. Yeah, the thing that uh, you're saying really that. is is the apocalypse means the revealing. When they listen to this program, when they listen to the program yesterday, they're getting these early signs that the revealing is being completed. And they, yep. It says, and this gospel will be preached to the whole world, which is have a relationship with God. Nothing else can substitute for that. Do the right thing. Do God's will. Stand up and speak out against evil, whether it's in your profession, your home, uh, your business, your country. Uh, be the uh, salt and light of the earth, just like Jesus called them to be salt and light. And if you're not good as salt and light, then what are you good except to be thrown out? And what happens well, is that our victory... When you speak up for God, there's something in you that knows you're doing right. Right. And, and you, well, that, that's the definition part of good. of you that feels good from doing well, that. And the definition of good is to hear and do Shema, hear and do God's will, which is why... Even the Temple Mount itself, Mount Moriah, was made in the same of the shin. So when you hear the ironic blessing, and they separate the third and the fourth finger with a V, and they say, Baruch Adonai, Amelech A'lam, etc., all the whole prayer, that basically is saying God's giving you his shalom, he's blessing you, he's empowering you to become his son or daughter by just simply hearing and doing his will. That's all you have yep. to do. That's Get yeah, right with God, folks. God Get bless. active. Open your mouth. Don't be silent. These are the days that silence is not golden, it's death.